Welcome to United by Trucks. I am probably just as jacked as you are. We're bringing back what's in my driveway and man, I am stoked to show you guys who our first what's in my driveway participant is of 2023. You can probably tell by the thumbnail, it's one of our own, but hang on just a minute. We got a full build profile on Pearl coming up with rock. I mean, the question is, what you doing? <laughs> Coming to see you. You trying to talk about Pearl today? Yeah. Dude, look at them shades. <laughs> you like them shades? I like them shades. Let me get you some shades. Come on out. Come on out here and let's see. Oh, rock on that cornbread cowboy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like it, homie. <laughs> Got them snake skins, y'all. Look at them things. Oh. We talking trucks, but we like that vintage wear too. Got a little cold one for you. For you. The, uh, the IPA for uh, yeah. Mr. Uh, Roberto. Got a load of sweet water. Appreciate and, you. And then for for you for your dog over here. Oh, you know he going. <laughs> we got that Mickey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and y'all didn't know it, but uh, Rocky builds guitars on the side, and he built me a jazz master. So we're gonna show you that. In just a quick second. Oh, Rock, come tell me what we're looking at. You guys are looking at a 161 Jazz Master that has been built by your boy. By your boy. <laughs> Kennesaw Mountain Guitars. That's it, man. Y'all didn't know this, I'm really into guitars. Play guitar all my life. So has Rocky. So we share a little bit of a, a little bit of a passion around these things. Anyway, we're here to talk about this truck though, so we're gonna do that. This is long awaited. This is something that I have gotten more feedback on than you can even imagine. Not only do people want to uh, see Rock's truck, they want to see Rock. They want to learn more about Rock. So we are here for the first What's in My Driveway of 2023, and we're taking a look at Rocky's truck. Killer little 73 that I can't wait for you guys to learn a little bit more about. Rock, appreciate you coming out, man. Absolutely, dog. I mean, this truck's been in this driveway many, many times. Cal probably, Cal maybe even like leaked a little oil. You probably wouldn't agree with that. I think it's left its mark. <laughs> <laughs> Just a time or two here in the driveway. Yeah, it has. I'm really stoked that you're here, and I want these folks to learn a little bit more about your truck so i would love them to learn more about my truck too yeah let's do it so <laughs> let's go, man. we are talking about your 73 step side yeah. short bed but tell me a little bit about how you ended up with this thing it started off as a state of georgia dot truck the story goes there was a foreman who transferred down to georgia didn't really know the ins and outs of southern summers oh yeah okay yeah. it's a lakewood truck by the way yeah so it was made in right the lakewood in plant yep yeah. the foreman got it Spent July in it yeah. for about two months, then realized these summers are brutal. Yeah, this truck has no AC. This is a no AC truck. He wanted an AC truck, so they sent it to the state auction. My granddad went down there and got it. Very cool. So, And it's been in the family ever since. What year do you think that was? 74. 74. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was just a year later yeah. that your granddad ended oh, up the, this truck. Oh, that foreman ordered that truck like three months later. was like, I can't have this. Yeah. So they turned around and ordered it for him, and that was Sent that. Sent this one to auction. Mm -hmm. Okay, very cool. Yeah. So it was originally, I, 
think it's called D46 yellow. And the reason, and I could be getting that confused with the pinstripe that comes on, came on some of these trucks, but the reason I even have any inkling as to what that is, because I had a very similar truck to yes, this. Yes, you did. <laughs> so yes, you did. I had a 73 <laughs> short bed step side that was originally a state truck that had also been painted black and then painted <laughs> white on top of it. And I'll drop a picture of it in right and no, here. No, this is not the same it's truck. It's not the same truck. It's not the in same fact, truck. this truck is way less rusty than the truck I had, but it is, it's really cool to know that we both kind of had this, had very sim I had a very similar truck to yours at one yeah. point in time. And I think when we first met, which has been, you know, five, seven years ago now, yeah. that that was one of the thing, the common things. I was like, man, I used to have a truck just like that. And, and what, what people may not know and what you may not know, and I'm revealing this for the first time, is I was on Instagram browsing trucks to get ideas before I lowered this thing and did everything yeah. to it. And yours was one of the first ones that I came across. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah, because I did lower it and put, and it had the same wheel and tire combo, but all well, that I sort of Well, I can thank thing. you for the inspiration <laughs> on Pearl. Okay. Well, speaking <laughs> of you seeing my truck on yeah, Instagram, let's sure. talk a little bit about what you did to the suspension, to the oh. wheels and tires, to get this thing looking like you wanted it to. Mm. So originally, you know, this is, like I said, this thing's been in my family ever since it was stock. And then sometime, you know, in the eighties, my dad, uh, took possession of it and drove it around forever and it was still stock and then it sat dormant at my parents house forever sat under a carport yeah. and uh, I took possession of it probably about I guess 2018 and and did everything that we're going to talk about to it my dad had taken and put you know these big mud tires on it and all this <laughs> just crazy stuff yeah that's Arthur for that you. is Arthur <laughs> Wagner right there for you <laughs> I had to undo a little bit of that and, yeah. then, and, and put it back and give it a proper you know proper yeah, yeah. Y'all need to go to that wigwam village out there in Holbrook, Arizona. Highly recommended. On Route 66. That's it, baby. When I got it to the house, I started with the lowering kit and I got all of my dad's junk out of it that was in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just went from there. And so, so it's lowered how much all the way around? Five in the front and eight in the rear. And that spindle springs up front. Mm -hmm. And then in the rear, it's flip kit. Flip kit. And uh, a shackle. Shackle and a block. And a block. Okay, yep. yeah. So you're, you're definitely eight inches, which is what I think gives this thing such a really nice level stance. I mean, it looks really low and looks really good coming well, down the Well, the, the cool thing about it is, is if you catch it in certain angles, it can either look completely static or it can have that just kind of slight rake to yeah, it yeah. you know which on the highway you know to yeah. capitalize on what you said it gives it that hovering yeah, appearance it just it looks is, like it's hovering it just glides man it really does and i will say i you know having had a bunch of exposure to this truck and been in this truck quite a bit this is one of the best riding lowered trucks i've ever been in and it's because you took the time to make sure that you were putting all new parts back on mm -hmm. it it's new ball joints it's new shocks it's got belt extra performance shocks all the way around and the reason I think that that you took all those extra steps is because this is your daily driver it is it's my daily driver so I'm a retired firefighter I drove this thing for many years an hour one way to Clayton County to work and an hour back highway and interstate hi highway interstate back roads everything and it has been you know knock on wood it has been a tried and true truck that I would not hesitate to hop in and drive to wherever. Yeah, I mean, you've taken it already four or five <clears throat> hours away to some truck shows. Oh yeah. We're probably gonna stretch its legs a little I'm longer. stretch its legs a little bit longer, yeah. But let's yeah. uh, let's let's pop the hood and talk okay. about the drivetrain a little bit because sure. I think that's what really gives you, aside from having a great suspension, awesome wheels and tires, which we actually will come back to here in just a second. But the drivetrain, I think is what's really cool in this. Oh thing. yeah. So this is a small block Chevrolet 355 cubic inch. It has had quite a bit of work done to it. Scat rotating assembly, set of dart heads added the, to it. Yeah, we'll drop all um, the engine yeah, specs down below. We're engine not going to remember all that right Because I can't remember numbers yeah, right either. now. It's got a Holley 670 carburetor on it, and it, it is carbureted. Yeah, so no fuel injection here. Completely uh, carbureted. Aside from the heads, aside from the Holley 670 and the, ro the scat rotating assembly, it's also got a mother thumper cam in it, which I think gives it such a signature sound. Music to our ears. Can't help 
help it. This is the inspiration for why we went with a small block in mud. And this is not necessarily the exhaust sound, but the cam lope that we were going for and sort of that same power band. So a lot of what you have here, we did similar things on mud. Same engine builders, yes. Evan Dobbins, less than a And, and I get to give a lot of credit to Evan because Evan, I went to Evan and I said, hey man, I want a daily driver, but I also want it to be aggressive, but not too aggressive where I can't yeah. daily drive it. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And this thing, this thing's great, man. And the way that he's tuned it and the way that he has just dialed this thing in, I get right about 17 miles a gallon. Which is on insane this thing. out of a mildly built small block. <laughs> I know, man. It's and crazy. I, I got to say, I think the thing that helps you probably the most is your transmission. So my transmission is a 700 R4, yep. which has been heavily built. The stall is a 2800 to 3200 yeah. stall. So you got a pretty good stall in there. I got a, I got a good stall in there and that's accompanied by a 373 gear which is a Yukon Posse. Yeah. So no more one wheel peel. <laughs> no more one wheel peel. <laughs> we got a little evidence of that. I guess I'll just go ahead and drop it in right here. <laughs> Pearl got? Posse. I'm about to take you to Star Trek the next generation. <laughs> um. <laughs> Ridiculous. We should probably go. Probably. <laughs> what you think about that? What bad? I mean, you sit there and baked them off there for a minute. It could have been better. I like it. Okay. I like it. Let's hope the cops don't come. Nah, they ain't gonna come. Dead. It's such a cool combo and what you're doing and what you've even proven to me, you know, because even at times I get that block around, you know, carburetors is that you can do it. You can drive, you can, you can daily it. drive these things. They did it back in the day. People still do it now. No problem driving a carbureted vehicle. You just have to pay a little bit more attention. And when the weather yeah. is, you know, changes drastically, you may have to give it a little bit more attention to get it up and running. It can be done and these things can be reliable. Absolutely they can. And that was, that was one of the things that I always kept in mind during this venture of getting this truck back on the road and getting it dependable was, you know, I want to have something where if somebody's like, hey, pop the hood, you know, Know, they see a carbureted you know small block Chevy yeah and they're like man wow so you're rocking it old school where I can go yeah and and I and you can daily it yeah, too, yeah. you know and, and it, you are and it be dependable you know recently we had um, some very cold temperatures here in Georgia and you know came out in the morning when it was easily you know like 12 13 nine, degrees eight, nine, seven. Eight, yeah <laughs> I mean, it was and cold, single digits. two pumps of the gas and it fires right off well as we're moving around uh to talk about the wheels and tires a little bit sure, more sure. actually shut this hood <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to bend your hood um uh, no we're not shut that thing shut so nicely so i want to point something out so recently at the uh, the Mecham auctions, you know, in the Barry Jackson, kind of people talk when people's hoods, you know? Yeah. Oh so my gosh. A good thing to remember is lithium grease, white lithium grease, these things quarterly. Yeah. Okay, every four months. And Specifically on a 7380 hood. They say pull down and push in. Yeah, look at that. That's One awesome. Finger. Yeah, I love it. All right guys, so we're now around here on the side and we're taking a look really at the wheel and tire package on this truck. Um, this is something we get more questions about 
than anything and not even <laughs> not even when it's billet wheels yeah. or aftermarket wheels i mean yes we get a lot of questions on those too but a lot of folks are very interested in running stock style steely stock style hubcaps and a white wall to kind of achieve that og look so yeah. obviously rocky's done that here rocky tell us a little bit about about what you got going here so i've got 15 inch stock steelies on it stock caps the tire is uh 225 70. so just something to note if you're running the the belltech lowering kit you can run a 15 inch wheel it will accept a 15 inch wheel and you don't have to shave any of the drop spindles or anything wow i know that some of them phone ringing i know that some of them you'll have to shave and you run into a couple of hindrances yeah you know especially when you torque the wheels down you know you got to kind of fight to get them off but these are great Super big shout out to Belltech. Basically what he's saying, Belltech spindle, Belltech drop kit, he's not, he did not have to shave his control arm or clearance around the caliper or anything like that to get these stock 15, I think they're 15 sixes, stock 15 mm -hmm. by six steelies to fit. This is such a cool look. I love this truck for really the stance and the wheel and tire package more than anything. Honestly. Me too. But these are, um, just so you guys know, what, what brand? Vercelli Classics, and I'll give you a tip, okay? Right, so, I'm giving you the tip. <laughs> as you've seen prior, you've seen the nice little burnout I did. I go through tires, okay? eBay, four tires, less than $350. Can't beat that. For shipped to your door. Yeah, you can't beat that at all. So thin white wall, these are like an inch white wall. Just go to eBay, check it out. I've run the hand cooks, I've run the Coopers, I've run these before. I'll be honest with you, they're, in my view, they're all about the same. And if you're going to really put are. some miles on them, you know, it's, it's okay and to the, go. And these tires have many, many miles on them. And I've never had, never had a sidewall blowout, never had, you know, anything crazy like that. So coming from me, I, I personally, I highly recommend them. Speaking of miles, since you've had it back on the road, how many miles do you think you put on it? <sighs> Probably 20 to 25,000. That's awesome. <laughs> and that's from daily driven 20, daily 25,000. Since you've had the motor rebuilt and gotten the gauges in, I think the odometer says 11,000 miles. Mm -hmm. So we can verify 11,000 yeah. and you're an honest guy. So we'll take yep. you at your word. 20, 25,000 miles on this truck over the last couple of years. That's pretty yeah. impressive. So we've talked about the stance. We've talked about the wheels and tires. We yep. talked about the drivetrain. You gotta give us a little bit of insight as to what's going on inside <laughs> come the on. cab here. Because let's check it out. I like it, I like it. <laughs> come In fact, on. I'm gonna grab another cab. I'm gonna well, grab come on, cab. let's look at it. So one thing that I love, he's got the nice, honest wear on the door panels. He's got sort of this really lived in interior. Give us some of your favorite parts, some of your highlights of the interior, Rock. The highlights of the interior are the wood grain. <laughs> I mean, can you go wrong with wood grain? Not you cannot go wrong with wood grain, <laughs> okay? Especially in the early 70s. You, can, you cannot. I, I personally, I think it's a sin if you don't have wood grain. <laughs> no offense to those who don't, but I mean, you got to get in the club. Come on now. All joking aside, yeah, I think the wood grain is, is one of the highlights. Well, the other big highlight is somebody's going to ask you where you got the steering wheel from, so tell them about that. It's just a gold flake uh, Gantt steering wheel from uh, Summit. Yeah. yeah. And they run about, I guess, 70, 80 bucks. Yeah. Something like that. And it looks awesome. Yeah. I think it really kind of goes with your, that vintage sort of period well, type. I've always grown up. I've always been into hot rods, guitars, all, all that stuff, you know. Um, the 60s kind of scene, you know, with drag racing and NHRA and stuff like that. And I always wanted to make this thing 70s hot rod shop. Okay, and you have a guy who wants, you know, just nothing crazy truck. Yeah. But wants a cool little shop truck. Yeah. And I have taken cues from, you know, early 70s, mid 70s stuff that I've seen in these trucks and even into 60s trucks, you know, even the, the, wheel, wheel. the wheel, Yeah. you know, and that's kind of where, where I went. And I think, I, I honestly think I kind of, I kind of hit the nail on the head with it yeah, and, I do and too. The aesthetic. I do too. I mean, I love, you know, you've got this really stock looking interior, but you've got it touched up. You've got the Mexican blanket, mm -hmm. you've got the, um, this gold sparkle steering wheel, but you've also got a, a couple of modern touches, like especially the gauges. I Dakota know, digital gauges, man. And, uh, you know, all the vitals. The two biggest things that really made this truck just like, mm, like, yeah, you knocked it out of the park was Chuck Farley doing the transmission, mm -hmm. the 700 R4, and then getting the uh, Dakota digital gauges.
and I wanted to keep them period correct. I, I originally had a uh, original tack cluster in here. Yep. But it was kind of finicky, you know, when they get kind of older, they're just kind of, eh, they're t kind of tired, even even after rebuilding. Yeah, it. right, so, you had rebuilt ones. Yeah, so I rebuilt those, and then I just opted for the Dakota Digitals, and I went with the Square Body Syndicate, because it is an exact, I mean exact copy. If you didn't, ha if they didn't have this, the Syndicate Series logo there, yeah. and you were just passing by, you'd be like, man, those, those, are, those are originals. There we go. Yeah, they look so good. Yeah, love Dakota Digital. And notice that. See? Yeah, let, me, let me zoom in on that. 11,753 miles since since installing these. Yeah, that's so rad, man. And that so was rad. a year and a half ago. Hey, real quick before we jump out of here, yeah. tell us about the uh, the shifter you got down there. So I've got a B&M Star Shifter, and it's basically just your old school throw shifter. Once again, heading, heading back to that you know 1970s hot rod kind of feel yeah. and uh, muscle car feel. I kind of wanted it to be period correct. I had a low car shifter in here and nothing against low car at all nothing against you know anybody who has one or anything but the i wasn't able to get the detents on it yeah, yeah you know and and i wanted to bang through gears you know especially with this thing it's so light in the back you know you can do burnouts and all kinds of stuff so yeah. i just i wanted to be able to pop it smack it and not have to worry about hey when i smack this thing am i gonna like jerk it into reverse or something yeah. crazy yeah, so you, feel, you got the confidence in that being yeah yeah totally totally <laughs> Just a little for the neighborhood. That's it. I loved it. That was awesome. <laughs> the interior wasn't in bad shape when I got the truck. You know, I had to do a lot of cleaning up, you know, a lot of elbow grease on it. But one thing that, that I wanted to do, just because I'm a little OCD, and I think Robbie can attest to this. Just a little. <laughs> about You're things. Squeak? If no, I man. hear a rattle or something, I get a little... I get a little I get a little shook. <laughs> so I don't particularly like my windows hissing, you know, especially when they're rolled up. So I reached out to Dean Swords, the vent window guy on Instagram. So he actually took a set off of his personal truck and and redid them to factory specs and sent them to me. And Dean, if you're watching, man, these things have been amazing. They are absolutely second to none in quality and just dependability and reliability. So yeah, thank you so much. Like you said, no hissing. No hissing, no hissing all, or whistling. Man. No hissing or whistling. We don't need that. So we're around here at the back, and we won't walk around and show every single sticker on this truck, but I gotta say, this truck has some really cool vintage stickers on it, some vintage inspired stickers. I mean, you got the sport bumper with this old six flags sticker on it and <laughs> got that old b&m sticker and that's on an, it that's an original that's an original six like sticker that thing that thing's older than i am oh i'm sure it is <laughs> i'm sure it is um tell me a little bit more about what's going on inside the bed when i got the truck into my possession from my dad you know all the support members you know for the original wood bed they were all rotted out and everything so i just said ah to heck with that so they're all i took them all out and i just put a, a sheet of pressure treated plywood down yep and you know fastened it down here with a bolt and so the nice little i guess it would be 50s box is actually my toolbox and all my tools are in there and i'll actually give you a little yeah, open it up little peek and this i mean this is this is heavy duty stuff this yeah, is and it's, like and it's not even going anywhere so like you, he's got the little braces down here yeah i put my braces down there and it just holds it holds the bed down I know, I know. Um, I, I bet Evan Dobbins is watching this right now and like <laughs> just like dying because he like has everything so nice and neat. And even my cow, my cow is yeah, yeah, like way. Yeah. cringing. <laughs> Man, when you're on the road, you just gotta throw them in there. That's it. And that's what I do. <laughs> so whenever you know, whenever I need to adjust the carb or do something, you know, I'll stop and you know, it, and, and it works. It's cool. It works. So the cool thing about this is, is there's virtually nothing except there's a brace here along here and there's a brace kind of the same distance from the front as I showed you to the back yeah and I can just take this off I can pull this piece of plywood out and I can work on anything from the top yeah, yeah. just take it off from the top and I can access everything well on that note you want to hop in this thing and maybe go run it down the road for a minute sure we can talk about some future things you want and to do you know just to take a moment I want to give a shout out to to 
you know, a couple of guys that really helped me, you know, figure this thing out and get this thing to where I need to be and to where it needs to be yeah. and to the point that it is now. And, you know, one of them is, is Evan Dobbins, yeah. less than Evan on uh, Instagram. My cow, how's it doing garage? You, Robbie, I gotta, I gotta give a it. shout out to you, man. You, uh, I think, honestly, the first time that I met you, I was actually looking for a set of wheels for this thing, for steel wheels. And, uh, ran across an old acquaintance and they uh they pointed me in the direction of you and you know you're you're a huge pivotal part of of pearl's journey man and, that's awesome uh, i appreciate you saying that you know another person rick cheeseman's helped me out on a lot yep. of stuff on this thing and uh you have helped me out along the way and i have forgotten to mention you please do not take it personally <laughs> i just i cannot remember everybody's name because so many hands have been on this truck it, it has not been just me i i will admit that and absolutely that is it take they're like children it takes a village to raise them it takes a village to build them no it doubt really does on that note let's go cruise this thing let's do it You ready to do this? I'm ready, man. Let's go for a cruise, talk a little more. Ooh, I love it. I love it. That's all you need. That's all you need. A little, and the magic happens. The magic okay. is happening. <laughs> Have you given any thought to like future plans for this thing? Like you've done so much. Every bolt on this thing has been touched at some point. Well, and you've got it to where it performs. Yeah, it, it performs great with the help of many others. You know, we've got it to where it is a daily driver and where it, it absolutely gives me zero issues whatsoever. Maybe the only thing that I, I would do is is do a uh, little shop manufacturing's uh, disc brake kit on the back. Oh yeah, I love that. Um, this currently has drums and discs in the front. Yep. You know, but other than that, man, I mean, maybe at some point I might do a 383, a stroker oh, kit in yeah. it, just to kind of, you know, wake it up a little bit more. You know, not that not that it needs too much more waking up, because <laughs> you know, you you get on it, it's it's so light in the back. Yeah. Because there's virtually no weight back there. You know, it's it's squirrely as it is. I don't want to go too crazy on it, but you know, some, something like that, I'd probably do. Yeah, I think those two are are really like common sense, practical type of upgrades. Yeah. Well, 383 because it's just like a lot of fun, but and the rear if, the rear disc brakes, I think, is, is something that would be worthwhile. For right. Sure. And even if I did that, it would it would be way down the road, way down yeah. the road. Because it's been such a good truck, man. I mean, I've, I've literally, since we rebuilt the motor and all that, I've literally had no issues with it. I love None. it. Well, hey, speaking of the motor, you know, we didn't get into the exhaust at all. Yeah. So this thing's got long tubes on it. So tell us a little bit about, you know, the exhaust, um, you know, from the headers back. So it has hooker long tube headers off of a 74 Chevelle. Yep. And if you're gonna do these trucks and they're lowered, you wanna go for something like a 73, 74 Chevelle, you know, Nova, something like that, because what, and then intentionally what happens is it allows the exhaust to stick up into the frame rails. Yeah, so you don't have anything hanging Nothing down below Nothing is hanging the frame. down. Nothing yep. is hanging down. And then that goes back into 2.5 inch exhaust and then goes over the over the axle and dumps out. What mufflers are you running? I'm running thrush welded mufflers. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I wanted to uh, I wanted to go old school, man. I wanted to keep it old school and keep that, you know, give it that give it that chef's kiss. <laughs> yeah. I got to say I said it already and I'm I'm sorry I keep talking about mud, but we did just build that truck and it's it's something on top of mind because I took so much inspiration off of what you did on this truck. Sure. Um, whether like I said, whether it be similar cams or making sure I had the overdrive, but but especially when it comes to long tube headers and having the welded thrush mufflers, I just even though we went with glass packs, mm -hmm. I wanted to go with something old school, and I, I would say that you know this truck and your steps taken on it just really inspired me to to do that. As you know, I've gone through a few different, yeah, you know, unnamed brand <laughs> types of, but of great mufflers, brands, but I'm great brands, top of the market, top brands. of the market brands, and there's been drone and whatnot within those, but these have zero drone, man. I yeah. mean. 
when I'm out on the interstate cruising, can carry on a conversation. Yep. Normally, there's no annoying drone. There's no annoying, you know, yep. high pitch noise. You know. Or anything. It, yeah. It's it's really nice. So who did the exhaust on this truck? So Brian Jones, the exhaust dude, <laughs> on Instagram did my exhaust. Yeah. And man, I'm gonna tell you what, he knocked it out of the park. Literally knocked it out of the park. Mike and Churchill are also great friends with Brian, but once I knew you he had done your exhaust and I love the way it looked. And, and the way it sounded, obviously. And the fact that he could get, he had no problem trying to get the exhaust over the axle on a lower truck. That's that's really the game. I mean, a lot yeah. of folks, a lot of exhaust shops won't do it. They won't mess with it. And a lot of exhaust shops won't touch it if it's lowered. Yeah. And, and Brian you know, will. And with Brian's interest in hot rods and lower trucks and his 30 plus years experience yep. of doing this on a professional basis and now he just does it out of his home which i you love know, his shop you he, got um, the best shop right he really knocks out of the park and he knows exactly what you're doing and can tailor your exhaust to what you want yep. and and he can take something that you have created in your mind and, and make it come to fruition he really can so before we sign off man is there anything else you want to say about the truck one thing I want to say is, you know, especially with the 700 R4s, you know, they they get a bad rap. I hear a lot of guys talking bad about them, and I don't know if that's because, you know, they've just picked one up on, you know, Marketplace or, or whatever the case may be, you know, but I had mine rebuilt by Chuck Farley. He's a local guy here in Dallas, Georgia, and he essentially, Chuck worked on a crew for NASCAR for 30 years. Oh, no kidding. And now he does, um, he, he's just got his shop in Dallas where he does transmissions. Originally wanted to go with a constant pressure valve body because on these 700 R4s, you know, the TV cable will act as your shift points, okay? And if you don't have that TV cable adjusted properly, you'll burn your transmission up. Putting a constant valve body in your transmission allows you to not have your trans burn off. If you're gonna do one of these 700 R4s, I highly recommend doing that because it just eliminates having to fool with that TV cable. All right, guys, this has been a lot of fun. I hope this has given you some ideas about what you can do to drive your truck daily, give you some confidence in your existing setup even, whether it's carbureted or whether you've just got a stock 700 R4 behind, you know, a TBI 350 in a square body. Um, you know, there's not one answer to being able to daily drive these trucks. This is Rocky's answer, and it's one I think that is obviously a great tried and true uh, type of recipe, but there are many recipes, and I hope this gives you a little confidence to do that. We're gonna sign off right here from our first What's in My Driveway for 2023. I gotta let you guys know, I'm super excited to be bringing this series back. Um, it's been gone for two years, and well, we're finally bringing it back, and I've, I've listened, I've heard you all, you all have been commenting, you've been messaging me, you've been telling me you wanna see these again, but well, we're back. We're gonna do some of the crews, we're gonna do some people that I don't know, but we're gonna take and really make this a series that you guys can can get behind and, 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 and will be consistent. Hey, thanks, homie. Thank you. I'm so jacked to be able to profile this truck, show you guys this truck, show you how Rocky has put this truck together to be driven daily. I'm super pumped about that. You guys have given me a ton of feedback on this truck saying you want to see this. So here it is. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite part about this truck is. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Leave a comment down below, smash that thumbs up button. Let everybody know you like this video. Let's go to the melt yard. Let's do it. Funny story. So Robbie's wife and I, we went to school together and this is kind of the area where she and I went to school. And uh, yeah, I just always thought that, that was kind of a kind of a funny touch when, when I met Robbie and then I found out who his wife was, I was like, ah, oh, that's cool. Um, you know, because her mother and my mother are actually really close friends. So it's kind of funny, yeah. So that's just a little tidbit into a little personal life. Cue the music.